Let, let me take you next. So, so where we were heading in our journey of the decision making, once you get through these alternatives and you're, you're determining what are these best alternatives that are possible for you, the next thing that happens is the fourth step. And in most complex decisions, there's no perfect alternative. Your job is to choose intelligently among the less than perfect possibilities. To do so, you'll need to set priorities by openly addressing the needs for trade-offs among these competing objectives. Now, the next presentation in this session was to be called Blind Spots, The Things You Cannot See by Jim Callahan. Let me introduce you to Jim Callahan. Jim is a certified behavioral health peer specialist, and he lives in Southwest Montana. He works at the Southwest Montana Community Health Center. That's not where he started though. Uh, he's an insurance industry veteran. Um, he's had roles at Chubb, at AIG, American Modern Insurance Group, and Pure Group of Insurance Companies. He holds a bachelor's degree from Fairfield University and an MBA from Lake Forest School of Management. Now, based on that background, you might have an expectation of who Jim is and, and what he is today. But Jim's story was catastrophically affected by an addiction to meth. And much like Eddie was just mentioning right there, this was something that he did never anticipated happening to him. And it, Jim has now dedicated his life. It is a tragic story about how he has suffered much despair and how he has uh, overcome in many ways a very broken life to, to, to arrive where he is right now. Now, Jim is currently with a patient of his in this um, facility who has now been found unresponsive and has no one in his life. Um, Jim texted us just as we went on air and said um, he was meant to be here at this moment with his client. And so with much uh, regret, um, I, I, I'm telling you that we're not going to be able to have Jim here today. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to record Jim's presentation. It deserves to be part of this. Uh, maybe not judge text today, but it does need to be in the after workup because Jim is a compelling individual and his story needs to be told. Um, I think, again, we are dealing always in people's choice with front page news and life happenings. And, um, and we need to respect that. And I thank Jim for his courage and telling his story. I can't wait for you to hear it as a, kind of an adjunct to the overall people's choice. So it was my great pleasure to introduce Jim Callahan, and you will meet more and hear more from him as we move forward in, um, in our year. So let me take you to our fifth step in the process. Now, this is where you have to think very hard about your risk tolerance in decision making. Now, people vary in the amount of risk they are willing to accept from one decision to the next. A conscious awareness of your willingness to accept risk will make your decision making smoother and more effective. It will help you choose the alternative with the right level of risk for you. Our next presentation is called Shaking Things Up by Angel Guerra Chagola. Angel is the Director of Risk Management at Aspire Bakeries. She is also the Chief Executive Officer of Beauty and Beast in Business, LLC. Angel has a bachelor's degree from California State University in San Bernardino and a master's degree from Liberty University. She is a licensed claim professional. She holds her OSHA 30 certificate and is a consultant for the Inland Empire Women's Business Center. She is a force for good. Now, Angel's presentation is coming to you in a video clip because today's reality of what is happening in the, in, in, in the COVID-19 era has affected her and her family, as many of you may be aware on social media. Um, and so with great privilege, let me just see if there's any information here. Okay, false alarm at the door. So here is Shaking Things Up by video from Angel. Let's roll the tape. Hi guys, this is Angel Garrett Chagoya with Beauty and Beast in Business and the Director of Risk for Aspire Bakeries. Unfortunately, I'm unable to be there live because my mom and my grandmother um, are in the hospital right now, but I really wanted to take part in this because it was really a blessing and I felt very honored to be asked to be a speaker. And so here we go. You're only going to be a product of your environment was what a high school teacher once told me. And isn't it funny that even when we have support around us, it's those negative comments that people make. Those are the ones that keep, cut the deepest and they stick with us. I married right out of high school. 
and I had a full scholarship to Cal State San Bernardino, but I still didn't feel like I measured up. It took some very difficult experiences to push me back into college in my late twenties. And after obtaining a bachelor's, I began to work in the SRS mail room back in January, 2008. And my motherly personality quickly had me adopting the two young kids that worked in there as well. I was helping them and leading them to be successful and creating a great change. Of course, I had to bribe them, you know, donuts and lunch do well, but we did a great job. And that led an operations manager to come to me six months later and say, hey, I see what kind of change you're having here. And I want to offer you a position as an adjuster. You know, I thrived in discussions with office adjusters and I was able to support them. And I'm just a lover of people. So I had not even started my training when the manager from a very coveted team, Stater Brothers team, came to me and said, I've been watching the way that you've worked in the mailroom, that you help my team and you're always there. So I want to bring you on to the Stater Brothers team. I want to include you and make you part, which I, of course, was so excited for. And so I did. And no matter how things went and no matter how well they were, you know, I had this little bird of doubt that was sitting on my shoulder and it was chirping in the back of my mind, big whoop, it's only male. And then I get to the next step as I'm climbing the ladder and it's like, okay, so you're working in an office. That's not even what you got your degree in. And there was always this doubt, no matter how well I was doing. And, you know, it went back to that one high school teacher who actually, you know, told me that I wasn't going to amount to much. It was that negativity that no matter how well I did, it just wasn't good enough. And by my early 30s, I had been a teen mom. I was married at 19. I was divorced with two kids at 21. I, you know, had almost lost my premature daughter because she was ill. I married and now I'm sitting in an office that I didn't even plan on having this career. But my constant in my life was my love for people and my desire to be of help to anybody I met. And so I pushed down that negativity and that bad self-talk. And I began to indulge in the positive psychology books and listening to podcasts. And then I decided that I was going to take charge of my life and I was going to make my own decisions. And that old high school teacher, he knew nothing about who I was and what my value was. And it was time to silence that little bird, because guess what? I had a song of my own to sing. And after four years as an adjuster, I decided to transition to the next step. And after receiving a call from an unknown TPA to me, that was back East, it appeared that one of my prior clients had recommended me to fill a position that they had been looking to fill for over a year. And I was going to be the only California adjuster for this Midwest TPA. And once again, my hard work had created great relationships that had opened up some positive opportunities. And within the first week, they realized that they needed an operations manager. So of course, I took hold of that. And I was like, that's going to be me. And I created an entire new program for the state of California. I chose to reach out to some amazing people that I had worked with, some colleagues that were in service partners, um, service industries and ask them if they were willing to create some synergies with me as I created the MPN and the UR and the panel programs that would benefit both our clients as well as the injured employees that we were working with. And, you know, during these first few years, I really recognized that 
even though I was taking these opportunities and I was walking through the open doors with this resounding, yes, yes, it's me. Okay. I, I, of course I'm going to take that. And part of me running full force with a big loud yes was because I was also afraid that if I didn't move quick enough, I might say no. And that little bird who was chirping, chirping in the back of my head might actually come through and, you know, start to tell me that I was not good enough. But I also realized that I also didn't have the right key to fit in every door. And, you know, sometimes it sees that I was looking at people who were those doorkeepers and I was seeing the eyes of my high school teacher looking back at me and they were refusing me entrance. The business world can be much like high school. Let's get real. The corporate hierarchy can feel like we're the new kid in school. We're the new kid on the block and we're walking down the hallway and students are staring at us and they may be snickering or glaring. And I felt like I wasn't smart enough to be on the debate team. And you know what? I wasn't athletic enough to be a jock and I wasn't pretty enough to be a cheerleader. And I just wasn't enough of anything to open some of these business doors. In my career, I had been told that my tattoos were unprofessional, so I decided to keep them covered. My hair shouldn't be anything other than its natural color, so I stopped dyeing it red. My bachelor's degree wasn't enough, and so I obtained certifications and went back to school to get my master's degree. As I was still operating this company, an entire state program, and raising my kids. And my mind and my emotions, they were always moving back and forth, and they still do, between that high school teenager who's trying to fit in and the businesswoman who's trying to make a difference. And as I continue to work, you know, I was working through these confidence deficits and I was working harder than before and I was running a state program and I was doing everything that I could to make myself fit in, but also rise above. But somehow I didn't fit into that pretty little box that the industry used to determine who was right and who was not. And I thought it was time to change. I wanted to see a change. I wanted to be the change that I wanted to see. And I wanted to invite others to come and join me. And it's funny that our industry focuses on providing benefits and helping others, but sometimes some people view it through jaded lenses. You know, at the beginning of my career, when I was an adjuster, I had a claim of my own. I had a slip and fall. And I was so embarrassed that it occurred. I decided, okay, I'm going to quickly, you know, I'm going to let my manager know what happened, but I'm not going to file a claim because how stupid could I be that I had this slip and fall? I'm an adjuster. Um, you know, I don't know why I thought that we were immune to, you know, injuries this way. Um, but a few hours later, I recognized that I could not move my wrist. I could not lift my arm. And I had severe bruising as well as muscle spasms that you could physically see through my clothing. And I decided I had to open a claim. And I was hoping that I would be treated as kindly as I treated my injured workers. But that wasn't the case. Unfortunately, there was an operations manager who decided to request my file go to the fraud department because guess what? He didn't like his adjusters filing claims. And I was mortified. I was embarrassed because yes, it went to this fraud department and I was told by an adjuster that because I was in the industry, I knew exactly how to work the system. I mean, when I was on the phone, I laughed, right? I laughed because I was embarrassed for falling in the first place. I laughed because I was an adjuster having to file a claim. And then I laughed at this crazy idea that I would use the system. 
But when I hung up, I was in tears. I felt horrible. And I was being accused of something that simply wasn't true. But then I recognized and I knew that there were probably other injured employees out there who were being treated the same way or felt the same way that I did. We just wanted the treatment and to continue to work because we're good at our jobs. Unfortunately, my treatment was denied and I had to request a QME. Diagnostics were done and QME said, hey, she needs wrist surgery and a shoulder surgery. And unfortunately, that too was denied. So I decided to close my claim and go to my private insurance to have this treatment done. And, you know, I felt like I was not fitting in and people looked at me, this operations manager, other people who knew that this occurred were looking at me like I was a traitor, like I was not supposed to file a claim. He was that perfect football player who was picking on this, what I felt like a lowly freshman. And again, that bird on my shoulder, it started to get much louder. But you know what? I decided it wasn't worth it. Um, I transitioned into something much better. And I had a secondhand view of what could go wrong, but also I knew what could go right in our industry. And we have some amazing, amazing adjusters, amazing employers, risk managers, service partners that are here to help. That's what this work comp forum and comp Laude is all about. And I decided to keep striving and to transition into risk management. And I also noticed that there was still a need for diversity and people equity and inclusion, especially at all levels of our industry. And I felt like I was that high school student who was rumbling in the hallways because I wanted my chance to try out for that cheer squad. And that was the beginning of the pro firm and beauty and beast in business. I created this organization that was focused on female professionals to provide them the resources and the community so that they could come together. We were shaking things up before DNI was even a hashtag. And I wanted to create a club that promoted sisterhood instead of gossip. One that welcomed all women with the foundation of empowerment, advocacy, education, and connection. I didn't want to exclude anybody. And I invited professionals from all industry to give guidance on finances, legal issues, ethics, health and beauty, creating a community that allowed women to feel safe, to be exactly who they were and to recognize that I could look at each one of them, no matter what size or shape their package was and let them know that they had a beautiful gift inside. And this group, so did my inclusion strive, right? So I began to reach out and start bringing in brothers in business who are our allies and professionals of all colors, shapes, ethnicities, genders, you name it. And we began to create this foundation for the Shake Things Up initiative. And I'm excited today to tell you that we're planning to go national in 2022, where California, Southern Cal, Northern Cal, Chicago, virtual events, because we're taking this across the US and we're creating a movement, one that welcomes positivity and community impact and humanity. You know, the recognition that everyone has a voice and that everyone's voice needs to be heard. And the movement will create a large chorus that's gonna drown out these little birds that are sitting on our shoulders. You know, the ones that are chirping doubt, the ones that are crying imposter. So my beauties, remember that each one of you is a beauty and beast in business. That beauty inside is that kindness that we give and that inclusion that we hold for our colleagues, our peers, and just everyone within this world.
and that beast, that's that perseverance and that hard work that you need because we need it to be able to advocate. We need to be able to get over barriers. This is not an easy initiative. D, E, and I, it's not easy, but it's needed. And so I want to tell you that in a world of boxes and squares, it's okay to be a circle. And in an industry of old traditions, it's okay to open your arms to something new. And when you hear that low pitching, chirping bird that's sitting on your shoulder, or it is in the corner, you hear it from afar, I want you to walk over and I want you to open that cage door. And I want you to let that bird out or open your windows and let that bird go. Because it's time that we dance, right? To the tune of your song and my song and this chorus that Beauty and Beast in Business is creating. This chorus, this movement, this wonderful song of people like me and like you across the U.S. and hopefully across the world. And the one thing I want you to remember is that you are special and you have everything you need to be successful. So keep one hand on the mountain that you're climbing and the other out for your colleagues, your brothers, your sisters. Because it's time to shake things up. And I want to hear your song. Thank you.